Hello Year 11 and welcome to our fifth video here for functions and their graphs. We're looking today at completing the square and using this completed square to sketch the graph of a quadratic function. Quadratic functions have an x squared in them and these are the things we can complete the square on. So here we go. Uh, it's a more general method. Now we sketched some quadratics in our last exercise but that really relied on us being able to factorize the quadratic. Now, some quadratics have no zeros. The graphs of those things we say are positive, definite, or negative, definite. Uh, that's just some fancy words, uh, some ways of saying that they never cross the x-axis. Okay. Because we know they sort of turn around and go back the other way, go back the way they came from. Um, so, sometimes they don't cross the x-axis, means they don't have any x-intercepts which uh, certainly by the method we were using last time makes it very hard to find the axis of symmetry. And that makes it very hard uh, from the technique we were using last time to find the vertex, which is a fairly important part of a quadratic. Now, uh, completing the square will always work for us. Okay, will always work. can be a little bit clunky at times, but it will work. And it is uh, the... Uh, it is the... It is uh, the background, it is the machinery that allows the quadratic formula to work. So first of all, with monic, monic quadratics, they're certainly the easier of these to do. With a monic quadratic, to complete the square, these are the instructions. Halve the coefficient of the x term, not the x squared term, not the constant term. The coefficient of the x term. Halve that number, then square it, add it, and subtract it both at the same time. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at an example here. So, y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. That is clearly a monic quadratic. It's x squared, not negative x squared, not 3x squared. It's just x squared. So, the x term has a coefficient of negative 4. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. And negative 2 squared is 4. So, I'm going to do x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 minus 5. Okay, because plus 4 and minus 4 really means that I haven't made any change to the value of that at all. Right, so that's still equally true. Uh, however, now these first three terms form a perfect square, right? And that perfect square is x minus 2 all squared. So hopefully <laughs> I write it like that. x minus 2 all squared minus 9. We have completed the square. y equals x minus something squared minus some other term here. When we complete the square like this, the coordinates of the vertex are going to be at 2, negative 9. We'll talk a bit more about that later. That's the process, completing the square for monic quadratics. Non-monic quadratics, a little bit tricky. The way we get around them being a little bit tricky is we treat them as monics. Okay, you'll see here by dividing everything by the coefficient of the x squared term. So instead of saying y equals x squared minus 12x plus 16, I half both sides and I get half of y is x squared minus 6, well, x plus 8. Same thing, right? We just halved both sides. Now I can complete the square here. Half that coefficient, negative 3 squared, 9 minus 9. Okay, plus 9 minus 9. Now I tidy that up a little more. Half of y is x minus 3 all squared. There's my perfect square. Negative 9 plus 8 is minus 1. So half of y is x minus 3 squared minus 1. It's not quite written as a square, right, having completed the square, because I don't really want half of y. I want y. So we need to double both sides again. So I double this term. I get 2 outside of that. I double that. I get negative 2. Sorry about the funny layout there. I just didn't leave quite enough space on the one note. So that's completing the square for a non-monic. Reminder, how do we do that? We divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the leading term. Then treat it as monic. Now, I did mention this, jump the gun a little bit. Um, the vertex from a completed square, if you will. If right, I manage to complete the square and get something that looks like this, y equals a outside of x minus h squared plus k, then the coordinates of the vertex are at hk. So the negative, right, change the sign of that constant inside the um, 
the brackets with the x. That's my x term, right? It's what I substitute in there to make that part of it equal to zero, right? And the constant. So let's have a look at that. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, we're going to sketch these two things. There's a little bit of work here. So first of all, uh, they are in a completed square sort of a format, but right. Go back to those steps from the last exercise. What do we need? We need to know the concavity. This is a positive x squared. It's concave up. Uh, I need to know the y-intercepts. So let x equal 0. Oh, here we go. Let x equal 0. And then I get 0 minus 3 squared is 9. 2 lots of 9 are 18. Minus 2 is 16. So my y-intercept is 16. Now, let y equal 0. What happens when I do that? Hmm. We get this thing equals zero, and I'm going to go back to this old thing uh, we did before where I divide both sides by two so that I kind of get a bit of a monic pattern going on there, right? X minus three squared minus one equals zero. Hopefully you can follow that. Now, perhaps we can think of that as a squared minus b squared as a difference of two squares. Then I factorize that. If this part is a, right, there's a plus the square root of this, and then there's a minus the square root of this, right? So that gives me x minus 2, x minus 4, which means my solutions are x equals 2 and x equals 4. There's a bit of stuff there. You might want to pause it and check it out and work it out for yourself. Satisfy yourself that that is correct. Now, I have the y-intercept the x-intercepts. I don't need the axis of symmetry because the vertex is at 3, negative 2. So, we draw a nice, neat parabola, 3, negative 2, draw my x-axis through. My intercepts are at 2 and 4. Okay, here's my two x-intercepts, 2 and 4. My y-intercept is at 16 up here. My vertex is at 3, negative 2. And um, and that's it. That's done. Okay, so a little bit different to how we did that previously. There is another example here, and I'm just going to show you the whole lot. Uh, well, what we have here is completed the square. Uh, we don't have, uh, you know, it's a monic quadratic, this one here. So we don't have to go through that dividey stuff. If I let x equal 0, then y equals, right, half squared is a quarter. Quarter plus three quarters is one. There's my y-intercept. Now, we could jump into finding the x-intercepts, but if my vertex is at negative one-half plus three quarters, right, this is concave up, and my vertex is above the x-axis, right, that's the lowest point. It means it doesn't get any lower than that. It means it's not going to cut the x-axis anywhere, so there's nothing else to find. There's my vertex at negative one-half three quarters. And my y-intercept is at 1. Draw my parabola, put my x-axis in, uh, my x and y-axis in, being careful that my x-axis doesn't intersect my parabola at all, and uh, just label those two points. That's it. So completing the square, it's really handy when we're dealing with quadratics. It's really handy for sketching and finding the coordinates of the vertex. And frankly, that's the most important part, I think, of a parabola. The concavity and the vertex is pretty important. Just one more thing to talk about here, because, you know, I'd hate to finish up too soon. That given this... Oh, can I go back a bit? Right, back here. The coordinates of my vertex rely on this number and this number. They're independent of this number here. That 2 there doesn't have any effect on the vertex. If that were a 3, the vertex would be in the same place. In fact, even if that were a negative 2, the vertex would be in the same place. My parabola would look different, okay? because then it would be concave down. Uh, it would change the y-intercept and the x-intercepts, but it wouldn't change the location of the vertex. So, so for different values of a, this number here, this coefficient outside of the x term there. Different values of a here generate what we call a family of quadratics that have the same vertex. Okay, some will be steeper, 
some will be flatter, and some will be concave down, um, but they would all share in common the same vertex. They would look quite similar here, just a different number at the front, right? But other than that, they would have the same vertex. They belong to the same family of quadratics that share a vertex. Right here, that's it for completing the square. Uh, we're going to look at the quadratic formula in our next exercise, uh, but that will do us for now. If you've got any questions, please jot them down so you don't forget, and I will see you in class.